Could I have POTS part three? So you've got the appropriate symptoms, you've had it for the correct length of time. You've also made sure that you don't have other things that can cause POTS like symptoms and issues. Now, what do you actually need to do when it comes to the rest of the evaluation? For most people, the standard really is doing a tilt table test. Now, this is typically gonna be done by a cardiologist where they're gonna lay you down on a table, they're gonna strap you in, and then they're gonna tilt you up and they're gonna see what happens to your heart rate and your blood pressure. Now, when we look at the most strict diagnosis criteria on this, you should have an increase of your heart rate of greater than 30 beats per minute if you are an adult within 10 minutes. And if you're a child, it should be over 40 beats per minute. Now, you should not have a drop in your blood pressure, okay? The drop you are allowed is anything less than 20 over 10, okay? So let's say your blood pressure originally is 140, now, if it drops down to 120 or more, that's too much. That would be orthostatic hypertension. Yes, I do understand there's a lot of people getting diagnosed with orthostatic hypertension plus POTS. Now, that's something for your providers, but that does happen. So that's the tilt table test that most people are doing. Now, beyond that, some people do have what's called hyperadrenergic POTS. This is seen by doing a 24-hour urinary test to look at basically your markers of adrenaline, epinephrine, norepinephrine. Say, what's happening there? Do you have way too much of those? That could be a potential cause. And then lastly, there are autoimmune stuff, specifically anti-ganglucide antibodies that can be seen in different neuropathies and everything else that can be a contributor and driving factor of POTS. So that's what the diagnosis on that side looks like. So this is the third video in the series of do I have POTS? And then where we're going to next, it's what should you be considering when it comes to getting treatment and getting better help? Because just because you've been diagnosed does not mean you actually have the information you need to get better. There's a very difference between having, oh, I'm diagnosed versus I understand why I'm where I'm at because the diagnosis doesn't tell you why you're where you're at. Okay. And I'll explain that in more in the future. So next time, I'm Dr. Z, and I'm known as the Brain Guy.